Did you know you can grow passion fruit, Passiflora edulis, or Lilikoi in Zone 6, Independence, Missouri? Come join me in the chaos. Man, look at these flowers. They almost don't even look real. That one's just closed up. This is what the fruits look like. Pretty big too. Another one up here. Dogs are perching. Oh, there's one on that side that you can't really see. Yeah, lots of flowers are popping out. Um, if you haven't seen what these things look like right before they pop open, let me see if I can see one. I saw one a minute ago. No, I can't find it. It's probably on the other side. Oh, there it is. It was on the other side. So that one is either closing or opening, but this one is what they look like right before they pop open. Because there's some other things that are not full-fledged flowers. Like I'll get these weird little mini ones, but those are what the real ones that are going to turn the flowers look like. And then, like I said, they open like this. And how did I do it? So here's my little um, thing I made. So this is passion fruit or Passiflora edulis. Some people call it liliquoi. If you've ever been to the islands. And this fruit is delicious. This is like that tropical flavor. My secret is right here. I know that's cheating. But I bring it in the house in the winter. So I'll prune it back to maybe three feet tall. Bring it in the house. And then over the winter, it'll actually grow substantially. Like I would say it probably grew to about right here in the winter. And I just put it outside like a month ago and it's like exploded with growth. So it likes being outside when it's warm. You put it outside in the winter and it will die. Even if you put it in the ground, at least this particular type. I have another type that survived the winter, but that's Passiflora incarnata, also called Maypop, which is actually native to this part of Missouri. But this one is not native to Missouri. This is like from Hawaii or Tonga. Um, and it's already created like a symbiotic relationship with ants. So these ants right here, they find what are called extra floral nectaries. So some parts of the leaves will put out like little balls of nectar and the ants will go around drinking them. Like right now, that's what they're doing. Right at the base of that uh, leaf right there, there's nectar that comes out and the ants eat it. And what the ants end up doing is they start seeing this um, plant as a food source, just the nectar at least. And so they'll protect the leaves. So if anything tries to attack this, like aphids or things like that, these ants will actually kill the aphids. They'll kill other insects that try to harm this plant. And I wasn't sure if that would happen in a potted plant, but it, it happened in a potted plant. So that's usually when you get a lot of success. Once the plant decides to um, live in harmony with the insects and other things that you have in your area that's usually when you know a plant's going to be successful and these are this is a grapevine I actually grew from seed so i bought grapes from the grape store grapes from the grape store grapes from the grocery store and they're the kind that had seeds in them which is kind of annoying at first and then i realized hey let's plant some of these and so i just collected like 100 seeds and planted them along this fence and for whatever reason only one of them sprouted and grew that. So that's the first time I've ever actually grown a grapevine from a seed from the store. And this one got kind of messed up and I'm not really sure why. It might have been like stuck right there. All right, so anyway, that's how you do passion fruit in places that get freeze, that, that, that freeze. You know, you gotta bring it inside, especially in zone six. I used to grow this in Arizona and it does fine outside in Arizona. Um, even though it gets a little cold, it'll drop a few leaves, but it seemed to do okay, especially in the summer. Oh, one last thing. If you don't know how to pollinate these, so this is the flower. It actually gets its name from the crown of thorns that um, Christ wore, that Christ was forced to wear, that they smashed on his head, um, which is kind of sad to think about. But anyway easy to pollinate you just pull these pads off these are anthers and you rub them onto this part of the flower right here called the stamen 
and that just transfers pollen. You just want to make sure you pollinate all three of them. Um, bumblebees do it too. There's actually bumblebees on these earlier, so this is completely unnecessary. If you have bumblebees, what they'll do is they'll climb in this little slot right here to try to get to the nectar, and they'll get that pollen all over their bodies, and they'll end up, you know, getting it all over the, um, all over the flowers. Get them all pollinated. Stamens. Lost the word. So, but if you grow this inside, and you actually want to get fruit, and you don't want ants in your house. I mean, obviously, if you let ants infest your house, <laughs> you'll... Oh, I don't know why that's funny. That would be messed up. But anyway, these are the easiest way to do it. You can also do it with a Q-tip. But why go waste a Q-tip? You know, just grab what you have. And then you can go and pollinate. I'm actually experimenting with native passion flower and trying to create a, a hybrid. Um, so we'll see if that works. Anyway, that's how you do passion fruit. Passiflora incarnata, liliquoi, Passiflora edulis. Sorry, Passiflora edulis. Incarnata is maypop. Edulis is passion fruit. And big pot. I would say that pot's probably, I don't know, 10 gallons at least. 20 gallons would probably be better. It's really heavy. I would say this pot probably weighs, I don't know, 70 pounds.